And I don't know if you notice that's really metal. Yeah. It's so neat being the original case like that. Probably have that in cash and see. Good evening. All right, so for today's episode, we're going to Southside Toys and More in Franklin, Indiana. Another place I've never been to, but I'm excited to check out. And let me say real quick, I do get lots of messages and comments about yard sale videos. And as you can see right here, it is 36 degrees and it is 11.28 a.m. on a Saturday. It seems like all through the week, it's nice and sunny, uh, 50s, 60s, even 70s outside. And we get to the weekend and it's cold or it's rainy or uh, even this morning it was snowing. I don't know if you can see right now, but there's still a little bit of snow falling. So I am ready for garage sales and I am ready for yard sales and I'm ready to make videos about that. But at this point, I'm just waiting for a nice weekend. So. Uh, that's not what today's about anyway. Today is about nostalgia business, and we are going to go check out Southside Toys in Franklin, Indiana. You might be able to see the snow a little bit better now. It's uh, actually pretty big flurries. Pretty big flurries dropping down, and it's really windy. A little chill in the air. So here's the store right here. Good morning. How's it going, man? Good, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Okay, thanks man. This is where all the vintage is over here. A lot of the new stuff's over there. Um, you got a little bit of older stuff, but most of that's gonna be like 2000 and up. Okay. The older stuff, 80s, 90s stuff, a lot of that's over awesome. here. Awesome, thanks man. Yeah, or in the cases. Right on. How much you have on those guys? I think they're around 30 a piece. Like 30, 35 is like the cheapest tomatoes I could find. We sold the uh, the Mavall one for like $120. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, Mavalls are crazy right now and the legs ones were uh they were around 80 bucks oh really and then we had we sold one for uh i think 40 because he's missing a limb <laughs> he had like two legs and an arm or something that's so cool though all right i'll probably grab one of those i gotta think about which one though okay thanks man appreciate that do a limb there um if you're comfortable with that that's fine yeah that's fine so what do you usually collect you like Motu. It's been Motu a lot lately. Uh, anything series one through 15 of Garbage Pail Kids. I am here to tell you about the Garbage Pail Kids show. It is disgusting, obnoxious, and worst of all, gross. Now change the channel. Currently on the hunt for, I think it was made by Matchbox, like the uh, talking Nightmare on Elm Street doll. What's with kids today, huh? And I'm always on the hunt for a Galoob Inspector Gadget in the box. Go, go, Gadget phone! Hello, Chief. Never found but it's been a while. Oh, yeah. I think we sold ours for like 200 See, that's like a great deal right there. <laughs> and it was, he was super clean, 100% complete. Yeah. In a, in a box. Uh, I don't think he had to insert or anything. Yeah. But like most of that stuff, it's like tripled in product. So oh, for sure. Three or four years. It's insane. And we had that. Do you know anything about Pokemon? I get into it here and there. Well, the base set, the first set, you have first edition, shadowless, right. and then regular base. Mm -hmm. And then uh, each one goes up more and more. Right. And we had a base set that the big, like, six, like Charizard, Blastoise, Mewtwo, those sure. guys, were shadowed. The rest of the whole set was completely shadowless. Oh, wow. It was a complete set. And uh, I think we got, like, 400 bucks out of it. Oh, or wow. Something like that. <laughs> now I'd be happy to pay 400 dollars Yeah, for exactly. It. Are these things out of that, that uh, Chilean case? Mm -hmm. Is that what that was? We got in early enough to get the uh, fireflies, mm -hmm. but not early enough to get Goliaths. We have a that set you see there that's coming back from AFA. Oh, really? It's supposed to be in by now, but they said another three weeks. Uh -huh. So we'll see what those graded out at. These of all, mask is all gone crazy. This collection was uh, 
got off a guy who was missing three pieces from the run. Mm -hmm. Actually, he wasn't missing three. He'd already sold the stiletto, and then I bought the rest. So I bought every single piece other than the three split seconds. Yeah. And this is what I have left of it. Oh, they're really clean now. Yeah, they're all really clean, really sharp. There was a few things that were broken on them, but then I don't know if you've seen the mask is nice. Uh -huh. I watched somebody crack one of these open, and the mask just fell apart. Oh, really? Hands. Yeah. Wow. They get hard, and they dry out and get hard, and they'll crumble. I'm trying to narrow down my selections here. Is that the Val Kilmer uh, battering? Yeah. It's pretty cool. That was really tough to try to figure a price on that. Because if you look it up, mm -hmm. you can't find it. Yeah, yeah. I looked on eBay. I didn't see anything. Yeah, nothing. And this is was made for the Warner Brothers stores. Uh huh. And that's their certificate from them. And it's signed by Val Kilmer. It's really cool. How much you have on that? I can't even see 500. it. Five hundred. Five hundred. Yep. I mean, that seems fair. Hello. Actually, I did find one for sale in the Philippines for like a thousand dollars. Oh, really? Or something crazy like that. And then both the frames are custom made by a company here in Franklin. They're heavy duty, really nice frames. How many were made, you know? Does it say on there or anything? It doesn't. No? I mean, I wouldn't think many. A thousand tops. Yeah. 500 to a thousand, probably somewhere in there. All right, I'm thinking about that one. I'm gonna get your battering. You gonna get the battering? Yeah, just too unusual. Now this is set on there. They've made this little thing to so it's not right tilting. And I don't know if you notice that's really metal. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's like I said, it's a nice thing. I don't know if you want to drill holes in your wall or whatever, but it it's a nice way to mount it. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll never see another one. It it's super rare. When it's signed. Expect that, dude. Um, he said he had a ton of film cells that his dad had bought from Warner Brothers store, uh -huh. but he'd sold all those off before he passed away. It's just so neat. Awesome. I'm trying to decide if I should grab a mask piece too. I don't know. It wasn't really my thing, but those boxes just look good. If you want, I can get you some more and let you pick which one you want. It's so neat being the original case like that. See the mask bullet? Wow. And then I asked him, I said, hey, if you got any extra cases, I'd love to have empty cases yeah. or whatever, you know, just because that's cool. And then he gave me this one was the only one because the, the box was so huge. Right. And shipping from Chile was just crazy. Fortunately, a friend of mine bought a bunch of these and he, uh, they searched his case. Uh -huh. They took a razor and cut it open. So he has one case like a slice through everyone in the the case are you serious yeah. oh man where uh the uh import guys jeez that and sucks the i think this one looks good you like that one i think so all right yeah it's so amazing having solid cases of these toys from oh the i know days, you know i bet that felt good opening that up <laughs> yeah. all right i think i'm good i think i've done enough did damage. you want one of the tomatoes uh i better hold off i'll tell you what you're spending so much Pick one over tomato you want, I'll just toss it out. Awesome, man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, no that. Problem. That'll give you some sort of deal, right? Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. No I'll toss you the comment, too. Oh, thanks. Seven sixteen ninety. Probably have that in cash. Let me see. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate this. This was a exciting little haul. All right. You want to get the door for you? Um, I can probably back into it. Okay. All right, I buddy. Appreciate it. Pop back in and see us. Awesome. We'll do. What's your name? Is uh, Adam? Adam, okay. Do you want a card to toss it? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Anthony, by the way. I don't know if I told you that. I remember. I figured it wasn't froggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take it easy. You too. Quite the hall of rarities. Pretty exciting. All right. Let's, let's get it home and take a look at it. 
All right, so we are back from Southside Toys in Franklin, Indiana. Really cool little place, and the owner, Adam, seemed really knowledgeable, super nice, and uh, very passionate about what he does. If you're ever in the area, definitely go check it out. Really quickly, let's get to the pickups. A couple lower-end Star Trek pieces, just as gifts for later. And then we got a couple throw-ins, like this issue of TMNT number 43, as well as this vintage Attack of the Killer Tomatoes figure. Very cool. However, let's move past these. The real stars of the show are right here. This, among other things, is one of the main reasons these local independently owned stores are such amazing places to visit. You never know what you're going to find, and it just may be stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. I've gotten to the point where I really enjoy kind of investing in um, more rare and, and I guess even like higher end collectibles. Stuff that's just hard to come by that you may not see a big return on right away, but the future may tell a different story. So let's start with the Mask Bullet right here. Mask was a toy line introduced by Kenner in the 1980s. It stood for Mobile Armored Strike Command. Really cool little small scale figures and vehicles. And over the last several years, they've gotten pretty collectible. Now this piece here, new and sealed, depending on the condition of, of the box, normally sells on eBay for somewhere between 130 and 170 bucks. I paid 150 for this one, so it's right in that range. But the condition of this one is just flawless. I would say probably gradable. Like this looks like it rolled off a factory floor today. The cool thing was he was able to score some of those unopened cartons that were discovered a while back. But one thing you do have to remember is just because something's in an unopened carton for 35 years, that doesn't mean they're all going to survive the exact same way. They can still get dings on the corners. The tape can get ripped. So where else except a cool little independent store are you going to be able to search through a new old stock carton by yourself and find the most pristine condition item in the entire box? And that's what I was able to do. And that's what you really can't put a price on. And then we have the Batman Forever Batarang. Adam told me that he had a hard time putting a price on this. For a guy to have that much knowledge and to still have trouble made me believe that this was a pretty rare piece. So I decided just to kind of pull the trigger on it. So of course I've done some research on it after the fact. And let me tell you, this thing is very hard to put a price on and it's very hard to research. There's, there's still many things that I would like to know about these. But I'll kind of tell you what I do know. These were sold in 1995 at the Warner Brothers Studio Stores. I believe that store lasted in the U.S. from, I think, somewhere around 95 to maybe 2001 or something like that. And what this is, it's a sonar batarang, uh, much like the one used by Val Kilmer in the movie Batman Forever. It's a one-to-one -one cast replica made by the same company that created the props for the movie. So it's basically a prop replica made by the exact same prop company. It comes with this COA, which I, which I believe is signed by Val Kilmer. I don't know how many they made, but good luck trying to find one. One thing I do know is Batman collectors are very serious collectors, and they are not afraid to spend money. Even though it was not screen used, uh, prop replicas can hold a lot of value. The only sold listing I was able to find that I was able to verify was on WorthPoint of the WB Studio Store Batman Forever Sonar Battering Prop Replica without the COA. It sold last year for $500, which is what I paid for this entire setup. This one obviously does have the COA. Someone spent a lot of money having this custom setup created for it. And to be completely honest, you'd have a hard time convincing me that, that this was a bad investment. I think it was a solid investment. I'm very happy with it. You're not going to find something like this easily anywhere else. And this is just one element that makes these little independently owned collectible shops magical places. So that is all we have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.